of the doorknob, she broke sit. She very much, when she first came here, was under the impression that someone moving towards a door was her opportunity to bolt through it. And that's going to create a dog who has zero respect for thresholds, and it's gonna bolt every time that door is open. Opportunists. They're gonna start taking every opportunity they can to bolt when they, when they see that someone is gonna go open that door. And that's dangerous. We don't want dogs to be trained that way. And whether you're training your dog to be this way or the way she was when she came in here, she's being trained. So by not being active in her training, you're training her. You're usually training her exactly what you don't want her to do. And by being active in her training and being 100% consistent, you're training a new version of Oakley. So you're training her regardless. Now, step three was good. She didn't budge, so now I'm gonna open the door step four, see what she does. Good job. She's come a long way. She every time I used to open the door, she used to just bolt. Like, cool. And what that represented to her was door open door open means go. You know? And so this is why I do this. I do it for multiple reasons. I do it one because I want the dog to start understanding that, that this doorway is normal and they don't need to be so freaking excited about it. That sets the tone for going outside. If they're starting a 10 of excitement, they're gonna be even more heightened when they go outside. So if I get them down to a two at the doorway, they might escalate when they're outside, but it's not beyond the level that I still have control over them. I'm still gonna have access to their brain. So that's one reason why. The other reason why is safety. So I'm setting the tone for calm. I'm setting the mind up for impulse control so they have more safety through thresholds. And then I'm also rebuilding associations, which I'll go over in just a second. Let's go. So she broke her sick, she wanted to go outside, so I reset her, sit. Just gonna, because she's kind of starting to get antsy, I just kind of want to see how she does with this. Good. Now, step five is eye contact, and once I get a connection, I'm gonna move forward. Eye contact is very important. I want the dog to make a connection with their handler and get that, let's go, get into a habit where that becomes a normal routine for them before they have access to the outside world. Now, I don't know if you remember drives, but Oakley has a very low pack drive. Her prey drive is much higher than her pack drive, which makes her a harder dog. So we need to make sure we're instilling pack drive in her a lot in order for her to take us seriously. So after this door is open, you need to wait for eye contact. And I don't command eye contact. I don't say look at me or watch me. I would just wait. And this is important because if I just wait, she has to do it on her own. And she's learning that she has to do that in order to have access out this doorway. So it's a win-win for the owner because she's gonna learn, I have to make a connection with my owner before I go out into the outside world. They're the reason why I have access to it and they're the resource that I have uh, to get there. And this makes you more relevant and it puts them in a better state of pack drive. So I'm gonna open that door. Now you'll notice I stand off to the side like this, got my connection, and that's because I wanna give her the opportunity to make a mistake. If I do this, I create a pinball effect. So if I am standing over the top of her to block her, and then I do this, you're gonna create that pinball. Ping! So I wanna eliminate that by actually giving her the option to make a mistake, and her coming up with on her own, that I don't bolt through doors just because the door is open. So as I'm standing off to the side, and I'm waiting for eye contact, she can take forever to give eye contact. So if you're waiting and you're annoyed, like, gosh, she won't stop. She just will not give me eye contact. Let's go. You can move her into like 360 or something. Just kind of create like a turn, sit. And that reset is going to be more likely to get eye contact. See that eye contact I'm getting out? So that's step five, eye contact. Step six is walk through the door together. Here. And that's how you prevent explosivity. 
the, the explosion creates adrenaline and overexcitement, which actually puts us at a disadvantage once they're out into the yard. So this is setting the tone for how the yard's gonna look. We're not exploding, we're not running around like a bat out of hell. What I need you to do is walk through this doorway with me in a nice composed manner, normalize the doorway, and then I'm gonna give you one more uh, indication that you need to stay close with me until I release you to go out and potty. Okay? Let's make one hypothetical situation. Let's say I say, here, to go through the door, and she explodes like that. That's not an explosion, but she still shot out the doorway even though I'm not walking there. <coughs> Come, you would call her back. Put her into it here. And then try it again. Now you're gonna repeat that over and over and over again. Let's go. Until you get a dog that walks through that door nicely with you. Let's go. And then once you get that dog to walk through the door nicely with you, what I'm gonna have you do is uh you know, have her sit or just at least have her kind of stay with you and make one more connection with you and then tell her to go potty. So that's going to give her permission to go out into the yard and do her thing. I think this is a really important part of every training process and so it's going to be very important that everyone in the family learns this process and becomes experts at it because it needs to be a norm. It needs to be normalized. I think all dogs need to learn this. But Oakley, you guys, are, you guys have a high expectation of her. You want big things from this dog. You want her to be able to come and call without a fence line. And so it's not just as simple as a tool. It's, a, it's more complicated than that. There needs to be a state of mind involved. And that state of mind needs to revolve around respecting the owner, respecting space, respecting the doorways, and making a connection with a human that's based on all of those things. Respect, not just cute, cuddly, fun, but respect. So, believe it or not, as much as this might sound super surprising to you, you won't be able to have a really good, reliable recall without doorways. They're huge. So, where you might want to cut corners sometimes because you're in a hurry, then you're going to find that her e-call numbers are gonna get higher. She's gonna get harder to uh, get through to. She's gonna get harder for her to actually wanna listen. And you might actually lose your tool. The e-callers are not foolproof. Uh, boxers are very strong-willed. And so if they decide that they don't wanna do, listen to something just because of the sensation on their neck, they have zero issue blowing through 100 if they're that determined. And how we fix that problem is by setting a lot of rules, boundaries, and limitations inside the home, and then obviously practicing these outdoor things and actually training instead of just throwing them into the, the fire and expecting them to listen. So I'm gonna send you a video on crate etiquette as well. It's not gonna be Oakley, it's gonna be a different dog, but it's gonna break down how we add coming out of the crate, walking to the door, and going through the doorway nicely, waiting for permission to go potty as a new ritual or a new lifestyle routine that's gonna give you access to have a very reliable dog outdoors. Now this, again, this should be done at all major, major thresholds and it should be consistently done for the rest of her life in order to maintain a really well-trained dog. Let's go. And that's it for Dora. Get.